Hi students, welcome to this video session. My name is Samuel Chupu Emeka. In this video session, we shall look at a topic in intermediate algebra, and that topic is graphing nonlinear functions. Specifically, we shall uh, talk about graphing quadratic functions. This presentation, as well as this video link, uh, will be on my website www.samuelchupuemeka.com Now, what are nonlinear functions? In simple terms, we can say that they are functions that are not linear. Their graph is not a straight line. You know, with linear function, the graph of a linear function is a straight line. Uh, for nonlinear functions, their graph are not straight lines. The degree of these functions is not one. You know, with linear function, the degree uh, the, the degree of the function is one, but for nonlinear functions, the degree is not one. Nonlinear functions can be quadratic functions. Quadratic functions are polynomials of degree two. They can also be cubic functions. Cubic functions are polynomials of degree three. They can also be other, uh, higher order functions. They can also be exponential functions, logarithmic functions, and so on and so forth. For this video, we shall study the graphing of quadratic function, but specifically, we shall be looking at parabolas. And in parabolas, we have the vertical parabolas and the horizontal parabolas. For this video, we shall deal only with vertical parabolas. Okay, P parabolas can be uh, vertical parabolas. They have that form y equal to a x squared plus b x plus c. We are a a is the coefficient of x squared. It is not equal to zero. Of course, you know that if a is equal to zero then that means it is a linear function. It is not a quadratic function. And then it, we, we can also have a horizontal parabolas. Uh, they are graphs of the quadratic function. A, X is a y squared plus b y plus c, where a is not equal to zero. So, but for this video, we shall deal mainly with a vertical parabolas. So why are we studying parabolas? Why? Uh, have you ever wondered why the light beam from the headlight of your car, usually you put on the headlight of your car at night or you use torch. Have you ever wondered why the light beam is so strong? Uh, you see that the, if you look at the headlight of your car or that of your torch, we have a parabola there, you know, uh, the place before they put the bulb, that compartment where they put the bulb, it is a parabola. Okay, because parabolas have a special reflecting property, so that is why they are used to uh, design uh, the headlight of your car or that of your touch. And other telescopes, television and radio antenna, if you look at the some of these satellite dishes, you see it's in the shape of a parabola as well. Now, why do the newest and most popular type of skis have parabolic cuts on both sides? Uh, if, you're, if you like skiing, you will notice that the newest skis by the side, it is parabolic. In it. That's, it has a parabolic cut by the side. So, this is because, you know, it shortens the turning area and it makes it easier to turn than when you have the uh, straight, if you have this, the size just straight on as it used to be, at it, it used to be initially, rather than having it parabolic, you see that with the parabolic nature, with the parabolic cut on the side, you can easily turn. Yeah, and 
this is the parabolic uh, side I, I'm talking about you see this is the parabolic side right here yeah you see how it's curved like this like maximum point this like the minimum point this like the maximum point this like the minimum point okay that is all the uh, that is some of the applications of parabolas now have you also noticed uh, a what a water fountain see how a water fountain goes okay goes like a vertical parabola with the case of a maximum point right and uh, have you noticed with a when you throw basketball or football uh, or soccer as nigerians call it soccer americans call it football american football and soccer well if you throw it it has a bouncing property and when you and when it bounces you know it forms like a parabola with minimum point in the case minimum point so these are some of the applications of parabola we have several more okay but let's move on now let's look at the vocabulary terms involved in this uh, vertical parabola quadratic functions parabolas vertical parabolas we've talked about it vertex axis line of symmetry vertical shifts horizontal shifts domain range okay we've talked about these first three so let's talk about the rest uh, a quadratic function is a polynomial function of degree 2 we've said that initially and uh, a parabola is the graph of a quadratic function the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola a vertical parabola is the graph of a quadratic function of the form y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c where a is not equal to zero the vertex of a parabola you know you can look at vertex in two ways uh, in the case of a minimum point like when we had a when we had a football here okay this will be the vertex if you construct the parabola this will be the vertex and in the case of a maximum point you know the the highest point the greatest point will be the vertex in the case of a maximum point in the case of a minimum point the lowest point will be the vertex so uh, the axis of a vertical parabola is the vertical line through the vertex of the parabola you know uh, when you get the vertex the maximum point or the minimum point a vertical line through that uh, point is called the axis of the parabola and with the axis the axis has an interesting feature is also a line of symmetry uh, with the line of symmetry when you fold when you fold that parabola in two across that axis or line of symmetry you have identical halves okay you have identical halves that is the half of this of one side is is equal to the is similar to the half of the other side so the line of symmetry is the axis in which if the parabola is folded across that axis there will be identical halves vertical shifts we will we will look at a, a situation that uh, concerns vertical shifts we vertical shifts is uh, is a situation whereby now you you start like uh, there's a reference parabola and that reference parabola is the the graph of a uh, the graph of a uh, y equal to x to the uh, second power okay now this is the reference parabola here y equal to x squared now you can draw uh, parabolas uh, from this graph by either translating it translation means movement by either translating it up or down 
Yeah, and when you do so, the parabola that is formed is known as uh, is is a parabola that is formed by vertical shifts. Yeah, when you translate it up or down, we call it vertical shifts. And then when you translate it right or left, we call it horizontal shifts. We shall look at this as we move on. Now, the domain domain of a function, you, 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 you're probably familiar with this when uh, you did linear functions. The domain of a function is the set of values of the independent variable. The independent variable are the x values or the input. You know, when you, when you input some values, you expect some output. So those values for which that function is defined, for which those input values will have an output, okay, uh, is uh, uh, what we call domain. Yeah. And the range is the set of values for which there will be an output from those input values. Yeah, for which the dependent variable, the dependent variable are the y values or the output values, those values for which the function is defined, okay, will be, uh, is the range, is the range of, of the function. Okay, as you can recall, we, we, we always see this in mathematics, we see it in calculus, we see it in, in algebra, uh, we see it in trigonometry, that y is the function of x. That is the way we read it, y is the function of x. And when we have this case, this is a quadratic function of x because the degree of the function is 2. Remember that a, uh, a quadratic function is the polynomial of degree 2. And this is known as the general function, uh, general form of the quadratic function. Uh, you can also write it this way because y is the function of x, so you can write it this way as well, where a is not equal to zero. Uh, this is important. This condition is important because that tells you that okay, it is a quadratic function. So, uh, there were some videos I did on quadratic functions. I didn't put this condition. This condition is uh, very important. Yeah, please. It's very important. So, when we have this uh, function, uh, y is known as the dependent variable because it depends on the values of x. Okay, x is the input and y is the output. X is the domain, Y is the range, okay? So, it depends on these uh, input values. Let's say, for instance, uh, the weight, your weight. Now, if you eat a lot of cheeseburger, you gain more weight. So, uh, the, the, the more cheeseburgers you eat, the more weight you gain. So, that means that your weight depends on cheeseburger, okay? So, that is kind of an example yeah and you can also say that the uh, diabetes depends on the weight right so the more weight somebody has the more likely the person might have diabetes so you see that uh, uh, diabetes is a function of weight and weight is a function of the number of cheeseburgers you eat so you can say weight to be y and then cheeseburgers to be x you know just an example and the x is known as the independent variable, okay, because just like the cheeseburgers, they are independent. You are the one who, you, you go and get it to gain weight, to eat and gain weight. Now, the cheeseburgers are independent on their own, but you go, you get it to gain weight, then that means you are dependent on the cheeseburgers, and the cheeseburgers are the independent variable. Now, let's bring it to statistics in statistics what do we call y y is known as the response variable and the x is known as the explanatory variable or the predictor variable yeah just we try to i try to uh, uh, relate 
whatever I'm teaching to other subjects as well or to other content areas okay now to graph parabolas we can either draw a table of values for some input values which is the X X is the input and then determine their corresponding output values the Y values then we can sketch these values on a graph using a suitable scale in this case when you are using a table of values it is important that you consider both the negative the zero and the positive x values yeah because you want to study the behavior of the graph it's good to consider uh, the uh, the negative input the zero input and the positive input and uh, you can also use a graphing calculator to make things easy you know to make life easy <laughs> uh, you can just put it in the graphing calculator and it will graph the function directly okay now some graphing calculators will just graph it alone uh, while some will sketch the graph and also provide you with a table of values uh, uh, in this video I would we shall look at it both ways we shall we shall draw a table of values we shall calculate it and then we can use a graphing calculator now I would have shown you how to draw this on a graph that's the first uh, option to draw the table of values and then sketch it on a graph and you see the way it goes but um, I don't have a graph paper here yeah and I couldn't get one that I needed using a Microsoft PowerPoint so uh, what we're going to do is we will calculate the table of values then we shall uh, see how we can get this graph using a graphing calculator and also trace it as well okay let's start with this simplest form you know the simplest function y equal to x squared so if we are drawing a table of values let's say we want to graph let's say we want to graph this function y equal to x squared we consider both the negative zero and positive input values so usually you can extend this to seven values negative three negative two negative one zero one two and three but uh, i just use five values okay negative two negative one zero one and two so when x is negative 2, y will be negative 2 all squared. Remember, uh, wherever you see x, you substitute it with negative 2. So this will be negative 2 squared, which is negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. When x is negative 1, y will be negative 1 all squared, which is 1. When x is 0, y will be 0 squared, which is 0. When x is 1, y will be 1 squared, 1 times 1 is 1. When x is 2, y will be 2 times 2, 4. Okay, now let us see how this works with a graphing calculator. And uh, I am going to use the graphing calculator on my website. So, assuming you don't have a graphing calculator, you don't have money to buy one, that's fine. You have my website that you can get it. Let's go to my website uh you can either go to my website by typing this directly you can uh, uh, type my website directly samuelchukwemeka.com okay that's one way to get to my website or another way you can get to my website is if you go to google i'm now searchable in google uh, you just type samuel chupu emeka Okay, and once you type it, uh, just on the first link, samuelchukwemeka.com, you click on it. It works in Bing as well. So, Google or Bing, just type in my name and you get to my website. Then on my website, you click on my picture to enter the site. And then you click on uh, Mathematics. Then you click on Algebra. This is Algebra. You may want to read this joke. You know, every morning, every day, you see a new joke, and relax the mad anxiety a bit. <laughs> then you click on algebra. When you click on algebra, you get to this page, and you click on resources. Resources. 
when you click on resources you look for this calculator ren calculators graphing calculator okay this is what we are going to use here we want to uh, draw x squared some you, you you can do this two ways okay you can either click on plot points and you enter your points here you see these points we had x and y we enter it here or you can just leave it as equations and we go straight here so i like this graphing calculator a lot i like it a lot uh, uh, is i mean there are so many things to learn here and you can even graph several things not just uh, not just quadratic function you can graph a lot of functions there okay so we have y equal to x squared okay you can either write the equation like i said or you put the points if you use if you're using table of values yeah but i want to use the equations okay so i just write x and then this is squared i put x i click on squared here x squared and then i click graph now this is the graph of x squared and you see with this graphing calculator one good thing about it is that it gives you the graph as well as the um the table of values okay as well as the table of values if you look at the settings we see that the minimum value for the scale this is the scale for the x-axis negative 10 is the highest and then 10 for the y-axis the same thing uh now and the table you can also set the table it started from negative five okay and each one is one step so you did negative five negative four negative three yeah but we did uh from negative two that was what we did so let's see whether our table of values is correct four one zero one four from negative two four one zero one four yay it's right okay now uh let's get back to this so we see that this is the graph of uh y equal to x squared and one nice thing here is that you can trace you can trace this graph you see it started at the origin to trace it zero zero if you keep going okay each point you're tracing each point the next one here is one and one which means when x is one y is one also so you can keep tracing it next one is two two and four when x is two y is four okay when x is two y is four okay uh i think that is it for y equal to x squared so let's now find uh, the for each graph we want to do in this video we want to find the vertex the axis the domain and the range okay for the graphs we want to do so the vertex is zero and zero if you look at it uh, this is the vertex okay because this is the minimum this is the lowest point remember we said that the vertex is the lowest point all right and that point occurred at zero and zero that's at the origin when x is zero y is zero okay um the axis is the vertical line through the vertex the axis is the vertical line through the vertex and that is at x equal to zero because at this line here you know at this line the y-axis x is equal to zero so this vertical line through the vertex is is the y-axis and it is the axis x equal to zero then the domain of course x can be anything okay if they started from negative five to uh four but they can keep going x can be anything so the domain is from negative infinity to infinity it will always have uh, meaning okay x can take on any value you can square any real number any real number at all you can square it so the domain is from negative infinity to infinity and remember that this is an open interval okay for infinity you do not put a closed interval you do not why 
why is why do you not put a closed interval for infinity because infinity has no end okay there is no smallest number in this world and there is no biggest number in this world it continues and continues so that is open it doesn't close and for the range now the range is the y value now you know when you square any real number it will always give you a positive yeah if you square negative two it gives you four so uh when you square any real number it gives you a positive so and from the graph you can see for the y it starts from zero and up it could only go up it can come down there's no negative okay it's from up so the range is from zero zero is included because the square of zero is zero okay from zero to positive infinity okay now uh zero to positive infinity we, we call it a non-negative so can you tell me the difference between non-negative set of numbers and a positive set of numbers well when you have non-negative set of numbers you include zero okay from zero to all the positive values now but when you have only positive you include from one like if you say positive integers positive in, in, positive integers it is from one to infinity to positive infinity okay but when you say non-negative integers you start from zero yeah why because zero is not uh positive and zero is not negative i mean zero is kind of neutral zero separates the positive numbers from the negative numbers it is just on the side okay uh now let us look at y equal to x squared plus 3 so that we can illustrate vertical shifts so let's graph y equal to x squared plus 3 and then y equal to x squared minus 3 so we can we've done the uh table of values let me just give an example here like if x is negative 1 negative 1 all squared will give you 1 1 plus 3 will give you 4 so get all these values yourself okay you can pause the video and calculate these values to make sure you got the right uh, output values and then you also do this one for instance 1 1 squared is 1 1 minus 3 is negative 2 so you construct these values also now let's draw this and see uh, what vertical shifts mean and what horizontal what vertical shifts mean so this is x squared y equal to x squared with a red color right now the next one is x squared x squared plus 3 right x squared plus 3 and the next one is x squared x squared minus 3 so x squared plus 3 will be green color x squared minus 3 the graph will be blue color we click graph so we see this now vertical shifts vertical shifts you see with the green color x squared plus 3 you, th this is the base here this is the reference graph y equal to x squared now for x squared plus 3 it goes up 3 units you move it up 3 units 1 2 3 see and for x squared minus 3 which is the blue color you move it down 3 units you see that yeah so this is what we call vertical shifts that's what we call vertical shifts and in each one if you click on each one you can see the table of values for it so you check this table of values with what i got here or with what you got and check the table of values of this one with what you got to make sure it is correct okay uh let's move on uh, we want to save some time now Let's look at the vertex axis domain and range. If you look at the vertex for x squared plus 3, you see here the vertex is the lowest point, which is 3. Okay. And that is at uh, 
x is equal to 0 because at this line x is equal to 0 and y equal to 3. Okay, that's why you have 0 and 3 as the vertex. And then of course the axis is the vertical line which is x is equal to 0. Then the domain of course is from negative infinity to infinity. But the range will be from 3 up. Okay, 3 to infinity. Now, 3 is included, remember. 3 is included. Okay, so the same thing, apply the same principle here. The range of x squared minus 3 will be from negative 3 to infinity. You see, it's not going to come down. It's always going up. Okay, so you can now form uh, a conclusion on this that with vertical shifts, the... Uh, let me put this back in slideshow. You can now form a, a conclusion on this that with the vertical shifts, uh, with the vertical shifts, you you have the vertex. Okay, the vertex will always be zero and then whatever you shifted it to. Let's look at what I put. Okay, the graph for the x squared plus m is the parabola. And the graph will have the same shape as the graph of y equal to x squared. Right? The parabola is translated m units up if m is greater than zero. And then the absolute value of m units down if m is less than zero. Yeah, because uh, if m is less than zero like we saw in negative three, okay, that means three units down. So that's why we said absolute value here. Absolute value of negative three is still three. But we will say that's three units down. And of course, the vertex is always the zero, like I said. And how many... Uh, how many units you shifted up or down okay and the axis is zero it's gonna be zero the domain is gonna be from negative infinity to infinity and the range will be from m m this should be m let me correct it right away yeah this should be m to infinity okay from m to infinity yeah, that was an oversight. Okay, then uh, horizontal shifts. Let's look at horizontal shifts. Now, you remember with vertical shifts, it is first of all x squared, then plus 3, right? Now, but with horizontal shifts, it's like this. We have x plus 3, all squared, and then x minus 3, all squared. So, let's see how it looks like. Uh, we form the table of values. You can pause the video and try this table of values to make sure they are correct. For instance, for negative 2, it will be negative 2 plus 3, which will give you 1. 1 squared is 1. For this one, maybe for 1, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 all squared is 4. Okay? So, uh, do the table of values to see that it's correct. And then let's see how the graph will look like for horizontal shifts. Okay. For horizontal shifts, we have x plus 3. Uh, we have this all squared. All squared. And then we have x minus 3. all squared okay and the base is still x squared so remember the colors the green and the blue now let's graph it and see how it looks like okay with the horizontal shifts you see the base is the red color which is x squared now the green x plus three you know now you have to be very careful here with a uh horizontal shifts you really have to be careful if it is plus three rather than saying going to the right three units you know this is horizontal they are sliding horizontally they are not moving up or down in this case they are moving left or right horizontally 
okay now some people make mistake here they will come and say that plus three will move move three units to the right no it is the other way around now how you can kind of uh, do this so it won't confuse you is you ask yourself okay how will i get from this how will i get to x squared like uh what okay what would be the value of x that will give me zero and that is negative three so you can you move three to the left i mean you can kind of think about it that way okay and when you have x minus three you think you move it to the left no you ask yourself what will you do to give you zero is the three move three units to the right so be careful of these signs when you have x plus three all parentheses all squared you know that it's moving the graph of x squared three units to the left and if you have x minus three parentheses all squared it means moving the graph of x squared three units to the right the same way if you have x plus two okay of course if you have x plus two it means move the graph of x squared two units to the left and if you have x minus two all squared it means move the graph of x squared two units to the right be careful of this with horizontal shifts okay um uh, and of course the vadex uh, we apply the same principle here for the vertex. The vertex here is negative 3, right? X is negative 3 and then Y is 0. Because on the X axis, Y is 0. Remember, on the Y axis, X is 0. On the X axis, Y is 0. So this vertex is negative 3 and 0. The uh, axis is uh, the line here x is negative 3 is the axis okay the domain it can also be negative infinity to infinity right and then the range will be from 0 always from 0 you see all these y values will be always from 0 to infinity it's not gonna come down okay so take note of that okay uh, so that means that for horizontal shifts you can kind of read this generalization now i did it with x plus n all squared i made a general statement for x plus n all squared i also made a general statement for x minus n all squared so you can review those now can we now tell these movements from what we have learned so far can we tell these movements uh, if you have y equal to x plus 3 all squared plus 3 this means move the graph of x squared move it three units to the left okay because this is a horizontal shift and then this plus 3 here means vertical shifts move it three units up now in this one x plus 3 all squared this is a horizontal shift so move it three units to the left and then negative 3 here is the vertical shift move it 3 units down okay i'm sorry again this should be down move it 3 units down okay yeah 3 units down that's the vertical shift then this one is horizontal shift move it 3 units to the right move the graph of x squared 3 units to the right and then move it three units up right and then this will be move the graph of x squared three units to the right and move these three units up now but when you have minus that should be the next thing then it means move it three units what down okay yeah it's good i'm doing this and correcting it now the corrected form is what will be on the website i hope you understood what i said now this brings us to horizontal and vertical shifts so let's pick just two of these examples and illustrate horizontal and vertical shifts you know like this one is horizontal shift move it three units to the left 
and then move it three units down then this one is horizontal shift move it three units to the right and then this vertical shifts move it three units up so we do our table of values you can verify this for instance with zero zero plus three is three three squared is nine nine minus three is six and with this we can use negative one negative one minus three is negative four negative four squared is 16 16 plus 3 is 19 okay so let's see how this will look like on a graph the first one is x plus 3 all squared minus 3 so let's have this minus 3 and the second one is x minus 3 all squared plus 3 so like this one will be the green color and this one will be the blue color you know you can always change these colors anyway you can always change them yeah but let's let's leave it like this now uh this one means move the graph of x squared three units to the left and then three units down then this one means move the graph of x squared three units to the right and then three units up so let's graph it okay you see that this is graph of x squared move it three units to the left and then three units down so if you look at this now if you want to find out about this we put our we highlight this by clicking on it and we go to trace <coughs> trace so you keep moving this so you can find out what I'm saying more so you see that is three units down and that's the vertex you can easily find the vertex you know you click trace and then depending on the direction you want you use the direction you want okay um, and the next is also what you do here if you want to trace this one just highlight this highlight it by clicking on it and you click trace and let's you we use this direction you see that three and three is the vertex so that is the way you find this uh you can find the vertex the axis the domain and the range all right let's move on uh and we made a uh general statement here you can look at it now can we have can we use another method to find the vertex and the axis yes we can find another method to uh calculate the vertex and the axis this method is called the completing the square method okay uh, for the sake of time i'm not going to uh, talk about completing the square method here but uh if you want to re read if you want to view my video on completing the square method what you need to do is you go to my site you know how you entered algebra now instead of resources you click on videos and when you click on videos you will see uh, quadratic expressions and equations quadratic expressions and equations okay and then uh, you will scroll down it is uh, completing the square method yeah it is two videos on it two videos on completing the square method so you can view it and have an idea of that okay and factoring also as we go on we will need factoring that is how you get to it as well okay uh where are we now let's return back to the graph okay so with the completing the square method we find the vertex formula this is the vertex formula right here uh, the x coordinate is negative b over 2a and then the y coordinate is the function of that when you substitute for the x okay there's something i want to mention here you know that uh, you really have to be careful uh, this is can you tell me the difference between this and this okay between this here this right here 
and then this you know this is coordinate okay the vertex is a coordinate where you have the x coordinate first and the y coordinate second now the domain this is an interval this is an interval okay an open interval right and the range also is an open interval as well so uh we have to be careful about this uh, to differentiate it that one is a uh, coordinate and the other is an interval okay let's move on so this is a coordinate the x coordinate will be negative b over 2a uh, this is the general form of the quadratic function remember so we, when we, we can easily calculate the vertex by just we find first we write what is a what is b what is c and then we do negative b over 2a to find the vertex and then we whatever we get as the x we now substitute it in the function to get the y coordinate of the vertex okay and then the axis will be the line x equal to negative b over 2a yeah once you get the vertex the axis is easy it's just the line of it the vertical line through the vertex okay now let's look at a former example like we had this x plus 3 all squared minus 3 and what did we have in it we had the vertex as negative negative 3 and negative 3 and the axis as negative 3 okay but for us to know this we had to graph it right we had to graph it okay now uh assuming we don't want to graph it and they just ask us to find the vertex right assuming they they just give us this function and ask us to find the vertex okay you will it's waste of time if you graph it to find the vertex so what you can do is you just use this vertex formula you expand it first and of course it gives this expanding then you compare it to this general form and once you compare it to this general form you find what is a what is b what is c okay so our x is negative b is 6 so negative b will be negative 6 over 2 a a is 1 2 times 1 so our x is negative 3 you see that and then when you substitute you substitute for this function okay wherever you see x you put negative 3 so this will be negative 3 all squared plus 6 times negative 3 plus 6 right and we had a y as negative 3 so the vertex is negative 3 and negative 3 just like we had it here see that just like we had it here okay <coughs> uh, the next slide is uh, the next area we are going to go into is very interesting uh, let us see how we can predict the shape and direction of a vertical parabola now we have been doing parabolas of y equal to x squared that is what we've been doing okay but not all the parabolas have the same shape as that graph what of negative x squared what of it how would the shape look like okay uh, we've been looking at the coefficient of x squared being positive that's the a a is the coefficient of x squared because it's a x squared remember coefficient of x squared is there so but what if a was negative do you think the graph will still be the same or not so let's illustrate this with this here our a is negative 1 negative x squared negative 1 over 2 times x squared and then negative 2 x squared so as usual we shall draw the table of values so uh, if I pick an example if for negative 2 this will be now you have to be careful if you want to find negative x squared where x is negative 2 you first of all do the x to be negative 2 all squared you first of all square okay you square first before you multiply by negative 1 remember your PEMDAS exponents come first please excuse my dear on Sally exponent comes first uh, uh, PEMDAS, which is 
parentheses, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Okay, so we do negative 2 all squared first. Gives us 4. Then 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. That is why you have it here. Yeah. Don't come and do negative 1 times negative 2 and then it will be 2. And then you do 2 squared to be 4. Students make that kind of mistake. Okay, so please be careful about it. The same thing here. You do negative 2 all squared first. The exponent gives you 4. Then 4 times negative half will give you negative 2. The same thing here. You do negative 2 all squared exponent. Exponent, which is 4. Then 4 times negative 2 gives you negative 8. Okay, so that is the way you do it to get your table of values. And then let's graph it. Let's graph this stuff right away. Now, if you're graphing this, you really have to be careful. Okay. Negative x squared. We have that. Or you can put negative 1 times x squared. It doesn't matter. Then for the negative half, this negative x squared is the base, red color. Then negative half, right? Negative 1 half x squared. So what we're going to do here is we put a negative one half times x squared okay and the next one is negative two put negative two times x squared okay and then we graph so uh you see now instead of opening up it now opens down so parabolas can either open up or open down okay when we have a positive coefficient of x squared it opens up when we have a negative coefficient of x squared it opens down now the the base the, the red color is negative x squared right now if you have a fraction you know negative one half okay you it's not an integer you have fractional values the more fractional values you have you see that it is widening the graph widens you see for the negative half now imagine if you have negative uh, 1 over 3 assuming we have negative 1 over 3 which would be a yellow color so negative 1 over 3 times x squared which will be a yellow color so you see it keeps widening it keeps widening you see that so with this fractional coefficients you see it widens now but with the integer values you know it narrows look at this blue negative 2 okay it narrows now, as, as, as you go further, you know, in, in the number line, with your negatives, you go further to the left. Okay, you see that with the number line, negative 1 is greater than negative 2, negative 2 is greater than negative 3, negative 3 is greater than negative 4. Now, if you go further down, like negative 3, it will narrow, you will see, let's look at how the orange color, the orange color will now narrow, narrow, uh narrow here okay it will be the first graph inside you see that you see it narrows and as you go further down on the negative side it narrows you see if you graph it to narrow more okay now but with the uh, uh, with the fractional between zero and negative one between 0 and negative 1, as you go further down, it widens. Okay, if we put 1 over 5. Yeah. You see, it widens. Okay, I, I, I do, uh, I'm not, I, I hope you understand this, you know. And the same thing happens with positive. Assuming we remove all these negatives now, we put positive. Yeah, let's put two x squared. Two x squared. 
and uh, here let's put yeah let's look at this first with the positives you graph it okay you see also it narrows narrows as you move further to the right as the integer increases it narrows but with the fraction okay it widens now if we have 3x squared you see graph it it narrows it narrows further if you put 5 you'll see how it narrows further okay now if you now let's look at the fraction part so you see in, in the integers when it moves further right on the number line the integers like uh, 2 is greater than 1 3 is greater than 2 4 is greater than 3 yeah as it as the coefficient increases it, it becomes narrower okay and with the negative integer part as the coefficient decreases because in the negative side negative 2 is greater than negative 3 negative 3 is greater than negative 4 okay as the coefficient decreases in this case now it becomes narrower okay with with the negative 5 it will become narrower than a than a uh, negative 2 so please just uh just uh and note this observation okay the same thing goes with the fraction so so this uh okay we find the ax vertex axis domain and range from that and then we can now if we do this we notice the similar effect we can now say we can now make some generalization okay as it's as the for the integer part as it increases it becomes narrow one and for the for this graph where the coefficient is uh, negative as it is uh, as it's less than negative one it becomes narrow one okay as it decreases it becomes narrow one yeah and then the same thing here for for the fractions here if it's between 0 and 1 the fractions it becomes wider and then if it's between negative 1 and 0 for the fractions for negative coefficient it becomes wider so please review it okay now let us look at the graphing of the quadratic functions in general um, you know we've been doing this x squared having our base as x squared okay sometimes we don't need to have our base as x squared they just put it in this form right away for us they won't put x squared plus 3 in which case is vertical shift or they won't put x plus 3 parentheses all squared in which case is horizontal shift now when they don't do it how are we gonna graph quadratic function in general and we have steps here step one you determine whether the graph opens up or down okay so if the coefficient of x squared which is a if it is greater than zero then the parabola will open up if it is less than zero the parabola will open down okay uh if it is equal to zero it's not a parabola it is linear that's the first step you do the second step is to find your vertex if you use the vertex formula or use completing the square method uh, the third step is to find your intercepts, your x and y intercepts. You know, we, just like when you graph a linear function, you want to find your intercept first. But, you know, sometimes your intercept will lead to a fraction and then you use table of values. Uh, I will say the same thing here, okay? Uh, sometimes if your intercepts uh, are not... Uh, if they are repeating decimals if your intercepts are repeating decimals or decimals that you can easily see on a graph with your simple scale with the simple scale that you use then you can just use table of values okay table of values actually will take care of this step 
is gonna take care of it trust me now but when you use table of values like i mentioned initially uh, make sure you consider the negative the zero and positive values so you can see the entire behavior of the graph okay and with one thing with the parabolas vertical parabolas there is always a symmetry so you kind of get your values later on as it's repeating you kind of get it later on um uh, like in some of these cases uh, you see what i'm talking about well in this case you see that one four nine sixteen twenty five here is the other way around twenty five sixteen nine four one uh but what i what i what i mean is like here it's like symmetry you know like zero you already know here that zero is the axis yeah because this rotates about it you see this is one and four this is still one and four okay if you had nine here you will also have nine here if you had a 16 you also have 16 so uh, sometimes it's you know you can find additional points by using that by uh, using that but the first thing you want to do is to at least the thing you want to do first here when it comes to the third step is to find the x and y intercept okay then if the values are repeating decimals or if the values are decimals that you cannot easily graph then you might want to uh you might want to uh uh, use table of values and have more values you know with table of values use like five seven nine values so you can see the entire behavior of the graph okay and that is also part of the fourth step you can plot ad additional points using the symmetry about the x-axis okay now if you're gonna use the discriminant to find the x and y intercepts well not not the x and y i'm sorry the x intercepts the discriminant kind of tells you how many x intercepts a parabola will have uh, if the discriminant is positive then the parabola will have two x intercepts if the discriminant is zero the parabola will have only one x intercept if the discriminant is negative then the parabola has no x intercepts now this discriminant is not really relevant in graphing no it just tells you how many intercepts the the for how many x intercepts the parabola will have yeah so it's not relevant in graphing no it just tells you how many x intercepts that the parabola will have yeah and of course you still remember this formula okay discriminant is good for finding how uh, the how many roots how many real roots and distinct roots okay but that is for linear functions anyway now um i'm sorry not linear functions that's for quadratic functions yeah but it mainly deals with the roots in graphing it just tells you the how many x intercepts it will have okay uh, let's look at an example let's look at an example of graphing quadratic functions in the general form so graph the function x squared plus 7x plus 10. So first of all, let's compare it to the general form ax squared plus bx plus c. We look at this, we see that a is 1, b is 7, and c is 10. Now first step, our a is 1, which is greater than 0. So that means our graph will open up. Remember, if a is greater than 0, the graph opens up. Second step, we can find the vertex using the vertex formula negative b over 2a so negative 7 over 2a yeah i can put this b first then negative 7 over 2a which is negative 7 over 2 which is negative 3.5 and then you substitute it here substitute uh, negative 3.5 for x in the function right so negative 3.5 squared which will give you 12.25 then plus 7 times negative 3.5 which is negative 24.5 then plus 10 so this will give you negative 2.25 so these are vertex negative 3.5 and negative 2.25 right uh, then the next step is let's find how many discriminants the discriminant is 4 
which means we will have two x intercepts. Let's find them. We can use the factorization method, the method of factoring. Uh, yeah, I didn't use it here now, but I mean, I did it. Yeah, I used method of factoring to find that x is negative 5 and x is negative 2. If you view my video on factoring the same way here, when you click on quadratic expression and equation, you can view my video on factoring. It's right here. It's, it's, on, it's on a playlist on this video here. Playlist video. I mean video playlist. Okay. Then, uh, from the... After getting the x-intercept, we will go ahead and get the y-intercept. Now, you know that from your knowledge of graphing linear functions, to get the x-intercept, you have to put y to be 0 and solve for x. To get the y-intercept, you have to put x to be 0 and solve for y. Okay? Then, we can now find additional points by graphing a tab drawing a table of values. You know, now the more points you have, the better. Honestly, the more points you have to graph a function, the better. So, I would say begin with a table of values. You know, you can still find the intercepts, but it's good to also have a table of values. So, you can kind of see how all these points are to show the behavior of the graph, the complete behavior of the graph. Okay, so we can. Now sketch our graph. Let's see. We had our vertex to be negative 3.5 and negative 2.25. And we had our x-intercepts to be negative 5 and negative 2. And we had our y-intercept to be 10. So let's see how it looks like. Let's make let's see. Get all this we all these uh, values I call that we have to say it in the graph. Uh, this is x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay. x squared plus 7x plus 10. And we click graph. So this is our graph here. And let's trace it to see what we got. Uh, let's find the... You see here, these are the x-intercepts. You know, negative 2 and negative 5. Okay. In fact, this is the first thing you want to draw that the graph will pass through where the graph cuts the x axis. Two points where the graph cuts the x axis. The x intercepts. Okay. And uh, if you want to trace it to find the value, you can say it negative 2 and 0, one intercept. And the other one, uh, negative 5 and 0, the other intercept. Okay. Uh, the next one is the vertex. The vertex is negative 3.5 and negative 2.25. This is the case of minimum point, so the lowest should be here. We can trace it. Negative 3.5. Okay, you see now, there's something that goes with this graph. With this graph, you see that when you click on it, this negative 3.6 and this is negative 3.4. So, but you want to see what you calculated to see whether this is correct on the graph. And we want negative 3.5. So, what we can do now is we kind of zoom in and then trace again to see whether we'll get negative 3.5. Yo, we got negative 3.5 now. So, you kind of zoom in, you know, to see it clearly. Yeah, to see more points. Okay. Then the next one is uh, the y-intercept is 10. Let's look for it. So that's where the graph cuts the y-axis. We don't see it here. So let's zoom out to see whether we can find it. 10. So here should be 10. Okay. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, where the graph cuts it. All right, uh, that is the graph for that. And, you know, on top of the graph, just on top of this line, you can write y equal to x squared plus 7x plus 10. Okay? All right. 
Thank you so much for listening and you have a great day.